Hello everyone and thank you for that introduction. Yes, I can tell the business and that's what I'm here to tell the business for ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Yes, we're going to be passing out Shady Punch all throughout this video. So make sure you get your glasses, get your ice in there and partake of this Shady Punch. Okay, because shade was thrown throughout that interview which is an old clip of an old interview when candy was kind of still new on the show getting her her whole body into the situation and trying to pick her friends and or associates or constituents however she saw them okay she was trying to get them to, to get to know them and of course mama joyce was her biggest fan and her uh, biggest supporter and she did a lot of promo uh advertisement at radio stations with candy and i don't know where the heck this video surfaced from i'm like candy did you drop down did you drop down to v103 and wanted them to replay that oh, i don't know how it got surfaced and i don't know how it would really promote your new show or your new spinoff i don't know fam y'all get down there and tell me what y'all thought about this old video resurfacing child if y'all don't know y'all didn't catch it girl go to the jazz and brand i think i may be able to play it if i got it i may be able to uh play a clip of it but we here today to serve up some shady punch called mama joyce don't open her mouth it's it's a blast from the past you know a blast video from the past and audio goes along with it because we know <laughs> I don't know how it started, but I know Portia Williams jumped her butt up in there trying to give her two cents in on her Instagram account, trying to promote Candace's new spinoff show and concurring with the video. Like she, she gave thumbs up uh, with what Mama Joyce had said. I like, you know, Mama Joyce be talking out the side of her neck sometime, trying to get her little 15 minutes of fame. And I don't know why they didn't. Do an OG or old mama uh, type of spinoff show where they had Mama Joyce up there and Mama D and shit. You can put Portia Mama in there too. Uh, just so you know, all the reality stars here in Atlanta, just get them a show. Uh, what here? See the mamas be clowning and stuff, but I can see I can see Mama Joyce fighting somebody, putting hands on somebody, cause you know she likes star shit. You remember she, when Todd and Candy was trying to prepare to get married and stuff? Uh, she just you know was trying to fight Carmen. Talking about Carmen used to wear Candy's old hammer down hair, wigs, extensions, and all that kind of stuff, and she could be fooling around with Todd. <laughs> I said, Mama Joyce, you need to sit your ass down somewhere. Please sit your ass down somewhere. But Candy can't control her own mama. But who, can we really control our elderly parents? Can we really? They are unfiltered after 60, honey. They say what's on their mind. And they say it with passion. Okay, so you can't really stop them. It's just, I don't know. It's just that they, your folks never never probably cuss, uh, you know, in your way. Well, your people, meaning your mom and dad, probably didn't cuss around you because they had respect for themselves and for you all. But when they were behind closed doors, they probably were cussing like uh, drunk sailors out there. But we know Mama Joyce had her say about Todd and Candy's wedding and how she didn't trust Todd. She didn't think Todd was good enough for her daughter. And we do know Miss Sharon, she's not in this world anymore. But, honey, I'm telling you, if Miss Sharon was still in this world and they were still on this uh, reality show, Mama Joyce did too much, honey. Mama Joyce came out saying her uh, Todd's mama was a prostitute and Todd's daddy was a pimp. <laughs> I'm saying. Like, oh, look. She said that what the streets was saying. I said, oh, Lord. But I'm here to tell you, just from my gut feeling, Todd and Candy would not have last because Todd liked taking up for his mama, which he should, and Candy loves taking up for her mom. So, telling the truth, I'm telling you, that wouldn't have been a marriage that would have lasted two years because Mama Joyce would have just been in it all the time with Mama Sharon. And Mama Sharon would have been, she would have been getting right back with, um, um, mama joyce and at the time mama sharon was living in that other guest house on 
Todd and Candace property. So she was going to be real close with any babies being involved. And Mama Joyce probably got set to the side. And she probably felt some kind of way. And she would have told Candace all about it. But Mama Joyce, honey, she had said back in the day, Portia was more beautiful than Kenya. And that Portia was a brick house. All right. And at the time, Candace and Portia was cool. And she probably did like uh, Portia more than she liked the Kenya because they were hanging out more. And Todd and Candy and Portia, you know, they were doing their thing. Hell, Candy even said that Portia kissed her. So she kissed the girl and she liked it. <laughs> now, we all know um, Candy's preferences. She goes, she goes both ways. Okay, and Todd's okay with it just as long as he can be entertained with the foolishness. Okay, and he can be a part of it. But um, as we've come so far in their both careers, can Candy and Kenya, we know that they are more good friends than Portia and her. And we know what separated them too. And shout out to the Jasmine brand. I was using some of her pictures with her logo on it. So please go over there and support her channel. Um, very well known blogger and videographer. And she does commentary on celebrities. Um, well, reality celebrities and over the celebrities period okay so go check out till i sent you over there but mama joyce is a mess but what i i got upset about this thing was portia why would you even insinuate or give the co-signage that you agree back then what mama joyce was saying and you still do today you think it's relevant that you are prettier and more classier than Kenya. When we know, girl, if you take off that makeup, and that's with anybody. If anybody wears a lot of makeup all the time and it's heavy on their face, when they really do take it off, they look kind of weird. It's like they need to have that makeup because they don't transform their facial uh, features to be kind of like, I don't know how to explain it really, but it's different. It's it's almost like you need to put something on your face because you look, you know, scary or you look like pale or something. Uh, like you don't lost your actual glow that you can get. But that's when you overdo makeup on your face because you got to like really let your face breathe sometimes. But anyway, I and mean, we know Candy has said something about, you know, dark circles around her eyes because I have it too. Oh, excuse me. And I also have it around my, my lip part or my mouthpiece part. So, that's hereditary. We don't, you know, ain't too much you can do but uh, about it. But concealer, use concealer and, you know, try to, a little foundation to try to brighten up, brighten up your skin. Like, uh, the rest of your facial features may hold. But I was upset that Portia would even co-sign and condone something that was done in the past that was hurtful. She would con con uh uh, co-sign it and agree with it fully in today you know in the future or in the present she was still like mama joyce was telling truth she was telling facts but mama joyce wasn't doing nothing but running her mouth pretty much and making her own opinion because the body that Portia, it's not all of that body is not hers she done did some extra contouring and adding here and there, especially to her buttocks part. She wasn't born with that butt, okay? And she definitely did something put to them breasts as well. So, what Mama Joyce is hollering about is made-to-order type of body structure. It ain't what God gave her, okay? So, and then, you know, Mama Joyce, she didn't like Phaedra. She like, why would you introduce um, my baby to somebody that's in a lower class Stance as Todd Tucker. You could have uh, introduced her to one of your lawyer friends or something like that. Why you had to go get the help and, and put him on my baby girl? <laughs> I said, Lord have mercy. But I said, hey, I see what Candy trying to do. I see you, Candy. You're trying to get something out there to keep people talking about your new show. Which, you didn't have to really bring that clip back if, in fact, you found it and you agreed to have it played to drum up some talk about you, Mama Joyce, to get that effect of bringing 
uh, can in the game out, like more free publicity. Like if you see how Mama Joyce act now, you, you can imagine what she gonna act on the show. So I don't know if that was a good PR move because people like you and they love how your family them get down even though it's ratchetness and mama joy's gonna bring it and we all gonna be like ooh, cringing at maybe some of the things she gonna say or do and then some of the new people that are in your uh new sitcom or your new spinoff show um <clears throat> they're gonna be kind of ooh hot to deal with as well but they're gonna be your uh employees we're gonna be looking at not necessarily all of your family members even though aunt bertha has her i guess grandson in there that's supposed to be dating everybody and leaving them uh cold you know like rick james he love them and leave them <laughs> so that's gonna be a trip so i'm thinking now if that was your pr stunt move to have people uh, get ready to watch your new show that's coming out this Sunday. And you wanted that publicity and that uh, promotion. You know, hell, you could have got on your YouTube channel. You have a large following over there. And you could have did your own type of publicizing to hype the thing up on social media. Because you have gotten uh, real well at performing or speaking on your platform and having people listen to you. Okay, you have your own brand. So, I mean, you have a large following that will come over and at least uh, watch your show one episode at least, you know. Uh, so, I didn't think that was something to bring your mama up in a bad light. And that's just my opinion. But my whole situation with Miss Portia is why is she inserting herself, co-signing on something that was very hurtful. Because really, Mama Joy shouldn't have said anything about anybody looks, okay? Because you know, when people were getting on your mama about these wigs she be wearing and all this kind of stuff, you didn't like it, Candy. You didn't like it too much. But I just found it was weird that Portia would come around go on your platform and shout you out and agree with mama joyce's bad behavior back in the day and then want to shout out your um or give you free promotion on her platform to say uh everybody watch candace new spinoff show D D da 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 i like that was kind of corny because you really don't like portia and why is portia trying to shout you out so much now Hmm, wonder, wonder, wonder who, who wrote the book on love? Because basically, Portia don't give a shit about nobody but herself. And if she is trying to use you, Candy, just as I'm going to keep it uh, out in the streets from what we heard in the YouTube world, she wants you fired off the Real Housewives of Atlanta, allegedly. Like I said, you <laughs> you got to watch this shit that people do. They don't like you like you think they like you and they haven't learned. And that's something that Portia has not learned. Because if anything, wouldn't it have been uh, a situation where y'all would be much closer? I don't think so, Candy. You know more closer than her than when you found out where the lie came from and who sponsored the lie. So, with Portia trying to give you accolades and try to uh, push up a narrative of loving you now and liking what you're doing with your spinoff show, child, she probably hoping that your show fail, which I don't think so because everybody like drama. Everybody love to see seniors cut up like they could still do the darn thing like be about them hands but not necessarily putting the hands in motion but be about that mouth chatter talk you know what i'm saying that chat chatter talk that you say the right words you could start making somebody feel angry you know that that kind of lip service where you don't even gotta touch them but just the things that you say you don't got under their skin so bad they just want to run up there and attack you and this that and the third honey Aunt Bertha, Aunt Nora, and especially Mama Joyce have that recipe slammed down and dunked, okay? So, they're going to come with it. And I believe the other people as your employees on or at your OGL or OGL 
wait a minute, old lady gang restaurant, they are probably <laughs> a hot mess too. Because you were doing a little promotion with them and trying to introduce us to the cast and this, that, and the third. And giving us little trailer shots, screenshots of what to expect. So, we already know that's going to be lit when it comes to your family. But I, from what I saw in the trailer, it's going to be interesting. You, we're going to want to tune in at least to see that one show. Oh, or one episode, or first episode, I should say. But I was like, I know Portia. You, Portia, need to go find out where her husband is, cause I heard she told somebody that he's out of town doing business. I'm like, you couldn't go with him. Why he did that business? Cause you ain't got no jobs. You ain't got no jobs that's holding you down. That that you need to be on set. And be able to take stuff. You free as a jaybird. Okay. So why why you didn't go with them, Portia? What's going on with that girl? We can sit and listen to you tell us that story. And then at the time that somebody was telling me that he was out of town, according to you, allegedly. Why was he in his, uh, why was he sitting off a video on his Instagram page letting us look at two calls? One of them was on top of each other. And I was like, what's going on with that? I'm like, you, he idolized stuff that much, that, what do you call it, piece of plastic of a car. It may be expensive, but the material they make that car out of is nothing but fiberglass plastic in a sense. And he's idolizing all of that. I've never, I'm, I'm like, hell, sell them so you can have a wedding of your, your choosing. Why can't he do that? If he's taking care of business, why he don't take care of the business of marrying you? Okay, that's what we want to know. We wants to know, pe uh, Portia, because half of us, I'm going to say half, but probably one third of us really feel it's not going to happen. And then if it do happen, it's not going to last long. It's almost like, why even bother? Just come off of the facade and get back to reality TV and make your money. Because to me, it seems like you're trying to stay close to Candy in case... A door might open up. She can probably bring you back in. But see that's one thing. I hate about the situation you put yourself in. And you're a grown ass woman. When you were making these decisions. You were probably like 38, 39 I'm sure. Because you're 40 now. Uh, did nobody tell you to quit your job. Okay. Did nobody tell you to do that. But from what quiet it has been trying to be kept. Loud as I'm going to speak it out. Allegedly, your camp, many of your family members and some of your friends said or were saying in the streets and it got back to bloggers that you didn't want to work anyway. You hated working. So I'm like, did your mama just groom you to uh, grow up and chase millionaires and billionaires? Is that your addiction? Girl, is that where we going? Where she raised you to be somebody's princess or somebody's queen and they were going to take care of you and have all the babies that you wanted to uh, make your village strong and proud and you don't have to do anything but go to lunch go to dinner with socialites girl who told you that's the kind of life you were going to be living because you could have also went to college you could have did something with your schooling but we know you had it rough because we know you went to the alternative school because you wrote it in your book. And usually alternative school is meant for rebels, troublemakers, the ones that can't obey or follow rules and directions. That's what alternative school was built upon. They wanted to se uh, separate the wannabes versus the ones that want to start trouble. You see what I'm saying? They wanted to help the students that wanted to help themselves as far as learning and getting their education and get rid of the clowns and the troublemakers and put them somewhere else and hopefully they will get their uh, diploma or maybe get a ged but they, they were like cast out to be uh hopeless so it because it, it it mind boggles me that even phaedra park she's a lawyer and she's a mortuary type director or person too and you had to have degrees and uh, uh you know some in-depth training and you had to hit them books real well. You know, she had to do it in theory as well as in practice. And I was always trying to figure out if you have all that going for you, why would anyone want to be a part of the entertainment industry? 
and I was, you know, talking with some of my friends and stuff, and one of them made a very good uh, observation. You know how they say um, when you got your friends, you need to have them to be around to elevate you or give you good advice and stuff like this. How they say iron sharpens iron. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we were having a little phil philosophical type, you know, talk about uh, why these, you know, educated uh, professional people just want to abandon their career and get into the entertainment industry. And she was telling me that uh, one of my good friends was saying because it, it's very lucrative. It's money. It's where you can make six figures if the public like you or you have a nice following or they geared to what you're having to offer. Uh, you can make millions in a couple of weeks or months versus, you know, you have to really hone yourself, get your uh, customer or clientele in there, and then they could be wishy-washy. You, you know, you're going to have your tried and true ones, but you're going to always have to be marketing yourself. You're always going to have to spend a lot before you even be get a chance to even say you don't broke even or you're making money. I said, well, damn. Well, they should have did what Portia did, and most other people, too, don't even look to go to school. Just go straight on into the industry. Let them, you know, devour you up, and whatever's left is just left. This is you. But I guess people that have conscience and they want the best for everybody, they won't fare well. And that's why we come across having people like One Hit Wonders. They get into the industry, the music industry or the acting industry, and they have to see what they have to do to stay relevant and they were like no i i just i just go on into the sunset i just go on back to school get me a degree and live my life that way and you know and be able to say you know you did something with your life and it meant something versus selling your soul doing despicable things being mean hateful greedy just because you want power and you want to rub elbows with the socialite people because you really met a lot of those people that are millionaires and billionaires some of them are really rude and arrogant and they don't have time for you especially if they don't think you belong or you're the right stock you know it's almost like racism again but not uh, of somebody's color or uh culture they're getting racist on you because you don't have enough money <laughs> You don't have enough stock in you, like breed, uh, your legacy, your family's legacy. You, you you don't, you can't even come in their circle unless you've been, I guess, uh, tapped in or whatnot. So it's almost like you got to be among the who's who's who, but they got to know of you or your family lineage, lineage. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Lineages or heritage i guess you would call since i can't pronounce the word but i'm sure y'all know what i'm talking about so i don't know because i've been watching Candy a lot too and see how well she is definitely uh going up that totem pole and it just gives one to you know think about oh did she do something did she do something very you know conspicuous did she do something that uh she wasn't supposed to do but they wanted her to do you know what I'm saying? To, to just move so quickly up the ladder of success, you know. But then, you know, that's just my conspiracy mind just working. You know, she could have gotten it from hard work and whatever. But sometimes I look at the people that she surrounds herself by and how she moves. And it just gives, you know, gives ones, uh, give ones to ponder or have me ponder about certain things. But like I said, just a conspiracy thought. Nothing more, nothing less. But I just thought Portia was just damn rude to be co-signing something. And it, it showed Candy was kind of embarrassed that her mama would say something like that. Because I damn sure would have been embarrassed. And me and my mom would have been hollering in the car, busting at one another. Like, why did you do that? Why did you say that? That was nice. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Maybe Candy get her softness from her dad. But Candy don't really talk about her dad that much. Kind of like, well, Portia always said her dad was the uh, Wonder Bread man. He couldn't do no wrong. But then on the other hand, she would say he was a dog. He was a cheater. He was a liar. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. But I just like, Portia, 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 where are we going with all of this, girl? Why are you co-signing on something that was done in the past? And just because it was brought up, you know, maybe for a PR stunt, maybe for people to start talking about Candace's new spinoff she has coming. Um, this Sunday and she's wanting to promote it and this that and the third 
you know. But why did you ever put your hands in it? You think Candace going to throw you a bone and get you back on Real Housewives of Atlanta? <laughs> you better think again because she don't want none of her paycheck cut. And she ain't going to get it cut just because you had an epiphany that you threw everything away. But quiet as it's kept. We have to really think about what Andy Cohen had said way back when before we saw the train wreck of what you call your spinoff show. Portia Family Matters. Very big duck. Uh, Don't do that anymore. Let's not resurrect it. Let's not even talk about it anymore. Giving me bad chills, bad vibes. Okay. It was a nightmare of a show. And it did say something very specific that... Uh, the door isn't shit for you. Uh, you may be coming back. You know, he kind of was playing with his words. Like, we haven't seen the last of you. So, it may be an opportunity for you to get back. Maybe on season 15. But, I don't, I don't see how you could play down. And, I don't see how they would agree to have you back on the show. And, you not be able to talk about what had transpired through your show and what you're doing now because what would your storyline be we know it would not be anything about the jose williams food bank organization because you know everybody mad at you over there <laughs> everybody on your daddy's side is mad as hell about you and how you made them look on tv not to mention on your mother's side girl miss storm running around there saying dennis did this that and the third to her and you didn't help her and then you were trying to put Dennis over there in Mexico court. What are they going to put him in jail, girl? You know that ain't where a black man need to be in Mexico? In a Mexican jail house? Girl. PJ would have been beating you upside your, her head with her toys. Okay, girl? Like, what my daddy? What my daddy? What my daddy? And she probably would have been high, high, hollering for him, girl. What a pitiful sight. What a pitiful, pitiful sight. But that's all I had, guys. I just had to come in here and talk a little bit about Portia condoning, co-signing everything that was said in the past. And she's trying to bring it up in the future. Like, how would you want us to bring your mess up that you had with family, uh, Portia Family Matters uh, five or six years from now? We'd still be talking about it. Girl, I'd be having nightmares about it. And laughing at the same damn time. But it just is what it is. I had to serve that shady punch up for you all. Maybe y'all liked it. Maybe y'all didn't like it. But catch the other video. You may find some to laugh about. Some of the kiki. Okay. Because <laughs> I always. I laugh at my damn self sometimes. You know what I'm saying. I'm like. God. What the hell was Portia thinking. She's supposed to be on the down low. Supposed to be taking it easy. Because she know everybody on, on her ass about where Simon is. Like did y'all break up. What's going on girl. Tell us the tea. Y'all decided y'all can't make it work. You know, are y'all getting ready for Fallon and her tell-all book situation to come to fruition? What's going on, girl? Because he, because for all these cars Simon's supposed to have, he ain't have but two up there. <laughs> he would try to showcase like he would, like he had his own little car, sh car show. <laughs> or you know how you go into a car lot and you go to the showroom flow. He was trying to make like he had a little showroom flow for them two cars. The only one he was really paying attention to was the one that was on top. This gray sports car or something. I'm like, man, if you don't cash them cars in and get you a life, honey, and sit your ass down somewhere, you better do that, Mr. Simon. You best do that, okay? And stop all this foolishness running around him thinking somebody's going to pay for a wig for y'all. When y'all can just go on down there and pay $30 to get your uh, license and go on and live your life. And then we can follow you from that point. How y'all doing after y'all got married? You know what I'm saying? Let us see that part. Is she the ball and chain? Portia going to be? Or you going to be the ball and chain? Which one? Which one's going to be? But that's all I have for this video, guys. Like and love, got him more. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to, share my videos. Everybody else needs something to laugh about. They can laugh at me. Okay? <laughs> but I'll see y'all next video. Take care. Bye-bye.